Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday. We're so glad you're here. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, Blessing to the World. of spirit on earth and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world i am the heart i am the hands i am the voice of spirit on earth and who i am and all i do is a blessing of spirit on earth and who we are and all we do is a blessing to the world good sunday morning Welcome to North Hollywood Church of Religious Science and our weekly Sunday service. My name is Dean Regan. I'm a practitioner here at NHCRS. Dr. Mark's title today is above the letter. And in preparation for that, let's open with prayer. I recognize that there is one source. That one source is that source of all good, all that is vibrating in an energy of love and intelligence and wisdom and infinity omnipresent, omnipotent, and I call this energy, this omnipotence God. In this moment, I choose to feel, sense, and know that God is all present, everywhere present, expressing as all that there is in every form, in every plane of experience and existence. This Godness, this goodness, is effervescently expressing itself as all present here, all present everywhere, vibrating in this magnificent world. I speak this word for our time together in sanctuary here in our beloved campus and as well at our home sanctuaries on Facebook Live and Zoom. All those that are experiencing and expressing an idea of connection, community, for this marvelous sanctuary, coming together right now in a perfect expression of love. I know everyone here is blessed. I know the congregation is blessed. Everyone on this campus, including our beloved musicians, are blessed with magnificent flow and joy. I know most particularly our beloved Dr. Mark is blessed and that the word of spirit, the word of truth, comes through him, expresses as him in every moment, and that that word lovingly, gracefully is received by each person open to this consciousness. I'm so grateful for this knowing. I am grateful for this prayer, which is already answered in that magnificent mind of God. And I release this word into consciousness, knowing that consciousness responds majestically, magnificently, in miracles, even through mystery. And so it is, and in faith, I know it to be true, I declare it to be so, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Face 
house of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Now, please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's join in singing our congregational hymn, I'm at Home in the Heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God And all my needs are divinely met The power of God is within me First I believe and then I see I'm filled with love and prosperity I live the life I was meant to I do the things truth and it sets me free. I am at home in the heart of God. A greater good is what I accept. Yes, I'm at home in the heart of God. And all my needs are to finally end. Yes, I'm at home in the heart of God And all my needs are divinely All fear and lack are behind me Yes, all my needs are divinely met Thank you, Sam and now it's time to give ourselves the gift of being in quiet, still meditation for the next five minutes. So I invite you to hold in your awareness the mantra, God is the love that I am, silently repeat it over and over to yourself, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
river comes from the sky a drop of rain falls on the ground we plant a seed for the river flowing flowing by we keep on flowing by Keep on flowing back. I wash my soul in the river. I see my sorrows drift from sight. Oh, dusty dreams on the water come up clean and bright. Come up clean and bright. Come up clean and bright. I am the river dancing in the light. When I rise and fall, hear the rhythm call. River running wild. Hey, river River running wild In my heart lies an ocean Like the never-ending sky Where all rivers come together Joining you and I Keep on flowing by, yeah, yeah. river running wild, yeah, yeah. Keep on flowing by. Beautiful, Gia. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Great, Gia. Thank you. Right. Good morning. I have heard again and again that um, introverts, this may be you, get their tank filled by having some time alone, and that extroverts get their tank filled by being with other people. I think for a big part of my life, I fell into the extrovert category where my tank was absolutely filled by being with other people. But now, having had a spiritual practice for many years, I think it's more of, um, I'm a little of both. And I think that that's probably true for most of us. We have some aspect of us that's extroverted and some aspect of it's us is introverted and it maybe changes day by day. Um, but what I know now is that when I sit to do my spiritual work, or what I call, I go to my prayer chair every day, um, I don't have to make myself do that. When I first started in the science of mind, I would, I would have to trick myself into meditating. You know, I'd have to like, okay, all right, well, look, if you meditate, then you can go and get one of those chocolate chip cookies. And, you know, so I'd bargain with myself and stuff like that. But, but you know, ultimately what happens, though, is that I see that, um, that that quiet time really, really feeds me um, in a way that I could not have understood or predicted years ago. So one of the contemporary uh, metaphysical teachers in Los Angeles and uh, in the US around the time of Ernest Holmes was a man named Joel Goldsmith. And I used to love reading Goldsmith's work. And I find myself back in it again. Um, of course, his work hasn't changed. But after all these years, I have. Um, and so both of these men, they have a similar goal, but they get us there in different ways. 
Ernest Holmes, I think, in his formation of the science of mind, he really understood and had tremendous compassion for the human condition. And so um, he cuts a lot of slack for our humanity. He knows that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and we're evolving and growing and we're learning lessons and we're healing things. He gets it. And so Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind gives us lots of tools to work with to move through those experiences, hopefully as gracefully as we possibly can. Joel Goldsmith, on the other hand, is not interested in your humanness at all. He wants you to go straight to spirit, just cut to the chase. You know, you need God here. If you were thinking about God, your problems would be solved. And I believe that that's absolutely true. But the thing is, it's so difficult when you're in the midst of circumstances in your life that are taking everything you have to, to just you know, keep your head upright and keep moving to say, oh yes, in the midst of this, I should be thinking about God. That's what Goldsmith wants us to do, and Ernest gives us some other steps. So the, point, the important thing is that both of these individuals lead us into a relationship with the divine power and presence that is, in fact, the very substance of our life. You know, in Science of Mind, we learn to master the law. And so this is really uh, something Ernest Holmes focuses on that, that Goldsmith does not. Ernest Holmes wants us to have mastery over spiritual law because it's through this mastery over spiritual law that the different areas of our life come together. Because we have mastery over the law, we get some level of control over our finances and of our health and our interpersonal relationships and our peace of mind and our contribution to the world and on and on and on. And I love that. I really, really love that. Because then, once we really, really understand how the law works, and we have some level of mastery of it, it's not that you forget it, but you don't have to think about it in a conscious way. Yes, of course the law is working. But now, my consciousness, your consciousness is advancing. And we want to get to this place that's above the letter of the law. So the letter of the law is, you know, this is how you have to do it. And what's above the letter of the law, I believe, is the spirit of the law. Above the letter of truth is this idea of living by grace. Now, Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind says grace is the divine givingness of spirit. And another uh, definition of grace that I really like is unmerited favor. You know, so you don't have to do anything to get it. It's unmerited. So principles, will, the principles that we study and study and read and read and read and talk about, I believe will take us so far on the mental plane. But at some point, you'll notice you have to turn within. It's no longer about the information or the techniques or anything from the outer world. We have to go inward to be informed from spirit. Uh, I think that this is the greatest asset we have. You know, Ernest Holmes, our founder, said, there is no mysticism without an ongoing practice of meditation. So there's no form of mysticism in any tradition around the world that doesn't focus on meditation. Ernest also says there's no real transformation without an ongoing practice of affirmative prayer and meditation. So for us, the path is about the combination of these two things. I pray in the affirmative. I do my affirmations. I love doing that stuff. You know what? I just love it. I love the whole process. I love saying the affirmations. I love doing treatment work. Ernest also gives this teaching that God is both love and law. That love is a presence that we court. And the way we court that presence is through the practice of lowly listening. We close our eyes, we close our mouth, hard for me, I understand. <laughs> uh, if I could talk through the entire meditation, I would, <laughs> which is why I like leading them sometimes. <laughs> um, but to close my senses off to the outer world and open to the inner world is really where, where it's at, right? Because through meditation, we glimpse another life that the spiritual masters have revealed to us through millennium. So Jesus said this, and I think this is fascinating. My kingdom is not of this world. What world is he talking about? Out here. This outer plane phenomenon. My kingdom is not of this world. So I'm not going to find it out here. And now between you and I, let me tell you, I have looked out here. I have looked everywhere out here. I have looked again and again out here because I was sure it was out here. And I'm here to tell you it's not out here. It's actually an inside job. 
My kingdom is not of this world. Oh, my God. So this means for us that health and happiness and abundance can be experienced here, inside, right? That you don't have to die for things to get better. Because remember, for a very long time, humanity believed, when, yes, life is struggle, but when I die, things will get better. But we don't believe that that's true because my kingdom is not of this world. And Jesus also says the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are within you. So I'm not going to find it out here. Where I'm going to find what I'm really looking for, what I really need, what feeds me and sustains me is going to be in here. So we can be in the world and not affected by the seeming difficulties of it. We say, well, how? How is that possible? Because on a, daily places, on a daily basis, we actually touch the hem of the garment. We connect to that divine consciousness. You know, regardless of the appearances of the world, and there are always appearances in the world. That's what the world is. The world is a stage for appearances. The world itself is an appearance. So there will always be, in the world of appearances, a lack, and there will be discord, and there will be people dealing with sickness. But God, we teach, is omnipresent. God's everywhere equally present. And so to realize God is the goal, that's what we're after, to have a realization, a spiritual realization in our mind of God. Because when you do that, you are not the same. Something changes inside of you. And what do I mean by a spiritual realization? When we know that the truth about God is more real than the condition or the effect that we are dealing with in our life. I want my consciousness to be filled with God. I suspect you do too. Because no connection to, uh, to any effect, uh, and, and I, have, I have been a person who was always interested in the effects. I'll tell you the truth. You know, when I found Science of Mind, it was like, oh my God, I am going to approve the effects in my life. This was fantastic news. And that was good. That was good. But you know, Ernest Holmes has given us a teaching that has so much more spiritual depth than just putting Band-Aids and fixing things on the outer plane. In New Thought, in the New Thought teaching, of which Science of Mind is a New Thought teaching, we are informed by the presence of God within. So, I have a problem, you have a problem, my treatment is above the level of effect, above the law. Why? Because we bring the realization, the presence of God, into our experience. We bring that knowing that God is now here into our experience. And there is fulfillment in whatever form uh, is necessary, that will happen from that. So if we bring the consciousness, right, if we bring the consciousness of the presence of God to the situation, that presence will solve the problem in its own way, God's own way. You know, often I have thought, you know, this particular thing will be good for me, or this is what I want, or this is what has to happen here. And you know, when I'm that controlling and that specific about things, I know that all of that comes from my past experience. You know, where is what I want coming from? Oh, it comes from my past. I think this will make me happy. I think this will add to my life. You know, the fact is that humanly, I think I know. And since we do not know all that God knows, right? So clearly, the infinite mind knows more than our human mind. Since we don't know all that God knows, it becomes ours to wait for God's revelation. Right? For something to be revealed in consciousness. Now, one of the ways Goldsmith talks about this, and I really like this, is he calls it an inner click. And so what you do is you close your eyes and you start to breathe. And you know, you say a statement of truth to yourself. You might say, I am one with God. I am one with God. Or like we affirm at the end of our service, I'm at home in the heart of God. And you just sit with that for a few minutes with your eyes closed. And he says, at some point, your breathing will change. You'll reach for a really deep breath, or it might, uh, your breath might stagger a few times when you're exhaling. And he says, at that moment, what's happened is you have made contact with the divine in a conscious way. And he says, once you've done that, your work is done. Get up, go on with your day. So this is Goldsmith's way of us taking just a moment, closing our eyes. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. <sighs> It, you know, it might take one minute, two minutes, three minutes. It's not a big thing like you say, oh, I've got to map out several hours every morning for this spiritual practice. No, no, no. It's much, much simpler than that. Remember, we don't know all that God knows. And we have to, um, we have to make ourselves quiet so we can hear what God has for us. I think when we become still, when we become open, when we're alert and receptive, 
we can say, yeah, I expect God to speak to me in some way. And, and I will tell you honestly, because some days I'm thick and I don't understand. I'll say, God, show me in a way I can understand and use. Show me in a way I can understand and use. And inevitably, it comes. What I need to hear or know comes. And you know, it's always amazing to me how sometimes I, I feel like I'm still in the first grade of my spiritual journey. Because I will sit and meditate and sit and meditate and sit and meditate and, and maybe for a while get nothing. But then I'll get in the car and I'll say, well, God, where was the answer to my question this morning? And I'll look in front of me and there'll be a bumper sticker on somebody's car and it will tell me exactly what I need. It's like, there it is right there. Okay, thank you, thank you. I got it, I got it. I just needed to see it in a three-dimensional kind of way. Uh, beyond the letter of truth is the spirit of truth. You know, Jesus gave this wonderful teaching. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. It's the Father within that doeth the work. And I believe this is true for all of us because everybody in the Bible is within us. What if we went to God only for spiritual realization? What if I went to God and I didn't bring my shopping list? I didn't bring all the things that I need to see improved in the world and in humanity and the cosmos and on and on and on. What if I just went to God for God? Right? In the stillness, in the silence, I believe that God can flow through us, that God can actually use us. See, our job is to provide the stillness. Our job is to provide the silence through which God works. Mother Teresa said this, and I loved it. She says, God is a friend of silence. <laughs> wow, pretty simple, huh? God is a friend of silence. So if I want to meet God, that's where I have to do it. Nothing out here has to move or affect us. But God in our consciousness affects everything out here. Isn't that spectacular? I think that's just amazing. See, our goal, I believe, as spiritual students is to become more and more a place for the light of God to shine through us, that we want to be, in fact, a transparency for God. Um, in, in this way, I'm not using God to get. Actually, I'm allowing God that higher power, the principal power and presence of the universe, to use me, right? Because Ernest Holmes said, there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it. And I love that. I hung on to that for decades. But he also says, there's a power for good in the universe and it can use you if you will let it. And this is where I believe we are heading in the teaching allowing the power to work through us for a greater good. Of course the power is going to work through you for good. God is good. God's good all the time. God doesn't know anything other than good. So it's not like the power of God is going to work through your life in some way that is not good for you. See, I want to develop in me the consciousness that uh, does not um, focus so much on pushing away or, or hating an error condition, uh, what I love is God, right? So focus, focus on something you can be for rather than something you're against. What I love is in the invisible. What I love is that spiritual realm. Now, we're not afraid of the world it affects. Absolutely not. We can be still and know a greater truth. I in the midst of you am God, Scripture says. So I think we rise above the mortal belief. You know, that mortal belief that's always reminding us, oh, I'm limited, I'm small, I'm not much, I'm a physical body. We have to rise above that into our true self, which is actually our Christhood. Because Ernest Holmes says in the textbook, our true identity is Christ. So our body is the temple of God. You know, and it takes... I think about this a lot because this has always been really helpful to me. From the 23rd Psalm, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, there's no question there. There's no question at all. It's just assurance. This promise comes to us through the scriptures, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's just not about financial things. That's anything. That's about your physical healing. That's about your peace of mind. That's about having uh, people you love in your life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I believe for us to have communion with God, this, this is the most important relationship we have, is our relationship with God, with spirit. Because everything else, all other relationships, all other good, all other health, all other satisfaction, comes out of that relationship. So I believe for most of us to have communion with God, um, everything else is going to flow from that. When we know I am one with God, and that means that 
we are one with each other, and that means we are one with our good, whatever that good is. This is why I say, I say focus on your oneness with God, and everything else will be added. So in every moment, we have the capacity to realize God's grace. I was out really early this morning with my dog, you know, and I love that early morning time, sometimes between like four and six. It's just great. It's just, it's beautiful, it's quiet, the air is cool. And I was standing outside with my dog this morning, who really just wanted to go in and have breakfast, but I was having a spiritual moment, so we had to stay out there, where I'm just realizing that all of this, you know, the beautiful shade that's keeping me cool, the sun that I'm starting to feel rise, you know, over the trees, all of this is the grace of God, that it's all given freely. I didn't have to do anything. This is the unmerited favor. Just like the air we breathe is the grace of God and that we all are in each other's life, I believe all of that too is the grace of God. So let's turn our attention inward for a moment and we'll do a little bit of inner work together. So close your eyes and bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing for a moment. Just notice that you're breathing in and breathing out. Don't try to control it in any way, just breathe naturally. So I know that there is a divine principle, power, and presence in seeking its expression through each and every one of us, as each and every one of us. And the instrument of this divine expression is our mind. So today, I believe that the divine presence within each of us is the most true, most real thing about us. I believe this presence is right here, right where we are. I understand that it is a power of good and of God. And I realize this plow power is flowing through us at all times. Today I accept the presence and power of the divine within me. I believe this power is operating in all of my life's affairs. And I acknowledge that there is a divine presence instructing me in all that I do. Today, I affirm the divine as the active presence of joy and happiness in my life. I turn from everything and everyone that denies the reality of the divine presence in me, as me, and through me. I know that every atom, every cell, every organ, every function in my body is brought into divine health and harmony. I know that every shadow of doubt, worry, and fear is dispelled and I am quickened with the spiritual power of the living God within me. I am graced with the presence of this power. I am blessed with the love of this presence. I am strong in the glory of this principle. I know I am the instrument through which the divine power is working. Today, I affirm that spirit within me now breathes newness into my being in every aspect of my life. I breathe in this newness. I'm filled with good. I'm filled with light. I'm filled with faith. I'm filled with the truth of my being, which is enduring and dynamic and divine. And so we include in our prayer those we love and hold near and dear. We surround them with a mantle of God's peace and love, and we know that this spiritual presence operates in them as them here and now. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So the energy that emanates out from our heart, our consciousness, wraps around the entire world, touching all people, lifting all people up in love and light and healing. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths. And I know we're blessed by being together, that we realize in taking a few moments to turn within, that as a result of this, God gives us everything. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law. And so it is, together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed 
All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. So blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so all about the stillness. Who knew there is an order, a rhythm, a purpose deep in my life. I'm learning to love from the place where I came beyond any time. been a child of wonder what I'm looking for I'm looking with now I understand I need only reveal more love in myself as it is planned cause I am alive in you Our own child of wonder. Thank you, Gia. Yes. Gia Gam... Oh, Gia. Gia Gambroti, right? Gambroti. Gambroti. Ah. You can get Gia's music if you'd like to be refreshed and inspired by Gia. Just go to iTunes and just download. Keep downloading. That's what you can do. Uh, but before we move on, let's thank very much the people who have come together to help this marvelous celebration 
uh, come to light. First, I'd like to thank our deeply creative team, the wonderful and talented Sam Krigger. And, and the lady I like to call the lovely lady of the flute, Karen Smith. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And in our sanctuary here, thank you to Tim Armstrong on uh, sound and lights in the back. And to our whole perfect and complete digital media team under the leadership of our beloved board president, Blair Thompson. So, so just in case you didn't know, that includes the folks here in the sanctuary, Doreen Remo, Brenda Jordan, Terry Prince. And on Facebook Live, Missy Ariano. Thank you, Missy. And on, on Zoom, we have Mark Crowell, Barbara Berg, and Ray Regan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Couldn't do it without you. Bless you all. Today's announcements for Sunday, July 25th, 2021. Aren't you glad I told you what year it was? <laughs> Donations, of course, can be uh, given over the phone for 30 minutes after the service, or you can go to nhcrs.org forward slash give. Um, for one-time or recurring donations, if you'd like, or use our very, very easy-peasy uh, text-to-give option. You just text the word GIVE to 818-457-3419. <laughs> it's done. Also, remember to shop on Amazon Smile. Are you aware of Amazon Smile? Amazon Smile, you select our church as the charity of choice, and at no cost to you, uh, the church gets cash. So that's a good thing. Um, also, prayer with practitioner is available after the service on Zoom. Or if you're attending here in person, practitioners will be available to pray with you here. If you'd like prayer, you can also email a prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org. And you can also call the church office and choose option four and leave a voicemail and you'll, you'll get a prayer there. Uh, Wednesday evening service, July 28th. Meditation begins at 6.50 with the service beginning at 7 p.m. Join us this week for a very special service featuring our own beloved practitioner, Suze Webster, as guest speaker joined by Reverend Mark. Suze's topic is Brain Freeze, Shift, Alt, Delete. <laughs> Ah, sounds like a really cool talk. <laughs> Abundance Workshop 2021, a science of mind tune-up for a happy life. Who wouldn't want that? With Dr. Mark Vieira on Zoom. Now, this is the last class this Tuesday from 7 to 8.30 p.m., but don't worry, you can still join in because each class is individual. So join us on, on Tuesday night. The cost is responsible giving. So it's, it's not too late to join Dr. Mark for this life-changing class based on the book, The Abundance Book by John Randolph Price. Visit our web website to sign up. Grief Support Group. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets today at 1 o'clock on Zoom. All are welcome. Youth Church reopens on August 15th. Yay! <laughs> We are so excited to welcome our youth ages 3 to 18 back to church. Whew. Beginning Sunday, August 15th, we will have youth church open for our 945 service. Children younger than 3 are welcome in our mommy, daddy, and me room. Hopefully with their parents. <laughs> In-person attendance for Sundays at 9.45 a.m. in the sanctuary. We are open for in-person attendance, as you all well know, and now you guys at home know as well, in your home sanctuaries. Uh, we will continue to broadcast on Zoom and Facebook Live, but if you'd like to be here in person, we'd love to see you. Zoom virtual patio, of course, is before and after the Sunday and Wednesday services, so join us there and you can congregate with your beloved congregants. Men's group every Sunday on Zoom from 11 to 11.30. Still on Zoom uh, in the morning, 11 to 11.30, and all men are welcome. Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Join us there.
Of course, visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain all the Zoom links and further information about our events and to sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Before I get off, I just wanted to say thank you. My family, our family is going to be moving. We've been here for about 20 years at this blessed sanctuary. We love you and we will miss you so much. Aww. Oh, no, 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 come on, it's a good thing. So, so let's, let's all stand and sing our final chant today. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is in truth. I, can I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I, live in the consciousness of peace. I, release, all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for choosing church. <laughs>